Meet Rockland County resident and professor of physics, Dr. Don Mueller. When the ball bounces, my arm is back. See, here it is. Okay. Yeah. AKA, Professor Tennis, the two racket guy. He has double vision. You'll notice it's not impossible. And he's giving new meaning to the word doubles when it comes to tennis. It's like tie so that's 94. Dr. Don specializes in physics, mathematics, and computer science, and has taught as an adjunct professor at Lehman College and Fordham University in the Bronx, as well as Concordia College in Bronxville, William Patterson in New Jersey, and even the University of Pennsylvania. And with his vast experience, is now taking us to school on the court by asking us to make the quantum leap into tennis by doubling down. You don't actually have to know anything about physics. <laughs> <laughs> to enjoy two racket tennis. I just happen to be a physics professor who shows people why the game is a little bit better than say one racket tennis. So why is two better than one on the court? Well, okay. So the two racket wrong. game of tennis is just like that of traditional tennis, except that each player is equipped with two rackets. Pretty simple. Two racket tennis is played using the same rules as the one racket game. What if someone hit the ball right at you? What would you do? Oh, I got two options now. You got two backhands, too, exactly. You can protect yourself. Hold one over your face and one over that other area that you need to protect. What about the overhead smash? You just get advantages over the one racket game and flexibility and wingspan and so on and more power with both sides. I must look awesome because I feel awesome. I feel like I'm exercising both halves of my body instead of one. To say that you can be faster with one racket, which I hear this nonsense from people. They say, oh, I, I can do that faster than you can. I, it's already here. <laughs> We're here. It was time to ask some tennis professionals what they thought of the two racket game. Usually when they try it, they say, hey, you know, this was easier than I thought. I wanted to see if they thought two was better than one. It's pretty much the same except two rackets. Jim said he'd been playing traditional tennis almost as long as he could walk. Does it give you more control as a player? Yes, because I'm naturally righty, but when I picked up the racket today in my left hand, which is usually my backhand, but today it was a forehand, I got a little more of an angle on the ball. I say neurobic tennis, right? Brush your teeth with your opposite arm. Instead of doing that, pick up another racket. Develop new neural pathways in the brain. Heads up. Ah. See that, I should've went with my other racket. Dara has been playing and instructing for nearly 20 years. I actually think it's kind of cool. The serving is a little hard. A lot of people that will switch hands with the racket and this way you don't, you have a racket in both hands. Not only will you develop your right or your left arm have an enhanced ability, your left or right leg will start working. It's just like anything else with tennis, once you get out here and practice, and practice makes perfect. Most of the people just have hang-ups about the game. They don't want to try it. They think it's just far too crazy for them. It's not tennis. They think that they're going to be clanking the rackets together. Right? Did you hear an orchestra out there today of clanking rackets? No, because you have rotational inertia. You power with both sides and a balanced workout. All kinds of shots you just can't do with one racket. When I'm out there playing with two rackets, I'll take on any guy. Double your pleasure. And although it may be catching on slowly but surely, there are people out there doing this stuff. Don would like to see two racket tennis taken to the next level. The problem is they won't be allowed to play in conventional tournaments, you see. It's just a reluctance with people in tennis organizations to consider this even a possibility. Like Professor Niels Bohr said when one of his students approached him during the era of quantum mechanics, the student said, Professor, I've got a crazy idea for you. The professor looked at it and said, yes, it's crazy, but not crazy enough. And that's really what physics is all about, the crazier and the crazier and the crazier.